Hello, everybody. Just 450 gram and 22 centimeters in diameter and the perfectly round shape. These are the characteristics that define an average football, like this one. It's a remarkably simple object, and yet, when put into a context of a game with two goals and opposing teams, one of the most powerful cultural forces on our planet. Now, we could all experience this force this summer, when, like every four years, the world's greatest football players from across the globe took the pitch to compete for the FIFA World Cup. This time around, it was held in Russia. And despite all controversies surrounding Russia as a host nation, the event attracted a staggering estimated global audience of 3.4 billion people. Now, that's almost half of the world's global population. Now, for some, it turned out as a massive celebration. For others, including the German national team, it turned out <laughs> as a national disaster. But for all of these 3.4 billion people, regardless of whether they were watching in the streets of Seoul or a rural village in Africa, whether they were watching on a laptop somewhere in the desert or in space, whether they belonged to the youngest or a much older generation, whether they prayed to Allah or believed in the superhuman skill of Lionel Messi, whether they worked at a petrol station or served their country as president, it was an experience that captured people's imagination and demonstrated quite vividly that football is a game that has the power to move people across all parts of society like little else can. It showcased the world's passion for a sport that over the years has become almost omnipresent in our popular culture. Because the FIFA World Cup is just the very pinnacle of experience in a game that today is around us almost any time and anywhere. With new digital technology making national and international football competitions ever more accessible to an ever greater amount of people. And, of course, this trend hasn't remained without an impact on the economics of the game. Over the last 15 years, the European football market has experienced a very stable growth and actually more than doubled in size between the football seasons of 2004 and 2016. It's an economic development that has rewritten the rules for what it takes for football clubs to succeed at the highest professional level and made star players an ever more precious and pricey investment. Now, in some cases, like the most recent Premier League champions, Manchester City, this has even led to a situation where a football club spends more on its defense than 52 actual countries around the world, according to data from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. It's an example that not only demonstrates how football's financial realities have changed over the years, but also highlights the unique position of those at the very heart of the game. Professional football players who have become powerful businesses and brands in their own right. And in the age of social media, rank among the most powerful 
and influential people on this planet. The rise to fame and wealth of football's main protagonists, the players, is, however, not the only way in which the passion for the game can fundamentally change the life trajectory of individuals across society. On the far opposite side of the football community are over a billion people living in situations of poverty or social exclusion, struggling to meet basic needs and achieve their dreams in the face of adversity and discrimination. Leonardo from Manchester, who you see in this picture, is just one example of a person who has experienced and lived through this situation. Upon his arrival in the UK from Iran in 2013, he had a very difficult time to establish new social bonds, relationships, couldn't find a job, and experienced the hardship of what it meant to be an immigrant in a foreign land. This is until he found Street League, a nonprofit organization that uses a mix of football and education to set socially disadvantaged youth on a path to improved living conditions and ultimately employment. The organization created a safe space for Leonardo to be himself, uh, to bond with others over playing the game he loved, while at the same time also equipping him with vital employability skills around the topics of communication, teamwork, and goal setting. This ultimately led to him landing a job with a local museum and ever since then, living a much more stable and happier life in his new hometown of Manchester. Leo's story serves as a powerful illustration how football can be a catalyst for social change, driving meaningful progress towards a more just and equitable world. And this quality isn't confined to any particular social topic. Today, we see NGOs across the globe using the game to address a wide spectrum of social challenges, ranging from preventing the transmission of HIV AIDS to advancing gender equality, for example, in India, to promoting greater peace and social justice. Together, they form a sector that we call Football for Good, which over the last 16 years has grown into a collective of over 120 community organizations that impact the lives of 2.5 billion people on a daily basis. Now, while this is a significant number, we believe it's only scratching the surface of the social impact football is capable of achieving. And the reason why is simple. The tremendous commercial success of the game is shared among a small elite of players, managers, agents, and football institutions. And as of today, fails to translate into a community benefit in a way that is inseparable from football's economic development. In other words, no systemic link exists between the professional game and the many high-impact football NGOs around the world. Now, in an effort to change this situation, we last year chose to team up with leaders from across the football industry and launched a global movement under the name of Common Goal. And to explain what Common Goal is all about, I'm going to show you a short video. 
There are two walls of football. The first is my wall. Our wall. The world of professional football. This is the superstar players. The sold out stadiums. The spectacular goals. This is where champions are made and layers are born. It's the football we know and love. But it's not the whole story. There is another world that exists outside of ours. A world in which football is not just a game. It is a tool to support those less fortunate than us. This world is not about winning or raising trophies. In this world, their world, football carries a different meaning. Para mí es respeto, buena comunicación y amistad. Spaß, Respekt und Fair Play. Respeto, valor y amor, porque o sea, el fútbol es amor. The idea is simple. We pledge 1% of our salaries to a collective fund. And Common Goal allocates this fund to football-based projects that make a real difference. Football business racism and make us one family. And we have confidence that we can talk to people with people. It's good. It's over. There's no border between genders. On the contrary, we have to take us in a group. Y, y empezar a jugar ese lindo juego. I'm different because I can now stand before people and talk because I know about being courageous just because of football. It is a small commitment that drives big change and ensures that every time we celebrate, they do too. Thank you. Now, the clip you just saw was narrated by Juan Mata, player of Manchester United and the Spanish national team. Juan was the first professional footballer to make the salary pledge and thereby took an initial step in forming what we hope will someday become a lasting connection between football as a business and FOPO as a tool for social change. Now, on the day of communicating his commitment to Common Goal, Juan also issued a public call to his peers to unite behind this vision for the game, and as a team of footballers, take on some of the toughest social challenges of our time. Since then, the first 60 professional footballers from over 20 countries, ranging from World Cup winners like Mats Hummels or Alex Morgan, to semi-professional players in the third division of English female football, have joined the movement and thereby validated that a 1% pledge can be embraced and afforded by pretty much anyone in the industry who carries the belief that football is not just a sport, but a tool for social change and integration. And now, beyond the players and a handful of coaches, this call has also been responded by leading football officials, such as the UEFA president, Alexander Sheferin, and a first professional football club, the Danish first division team FC Nordsjælland, who has decided to donate 1% of its ticket sales, stadium revenues, to the social dimension of the game. 
On the back of announcing these commitments, the Common Goal movement made headlines in over 2,000 global news publications, and perhaps more importantly, inspired millions of fans across social media to reimagine what the beautiful game can bring to this world. And it is the combination of these developments that today makes us cautiously optimistic about the future. Because what we are seeing in these developments is the start of a shared social agenda for football, going beyond individual brands, titles, and institutional boundaries to deliver on a much greater and more essential goal. The achievement of the universally agreed upon 17 UN global goals for creating a more prosperous, peaceful, and equitable planet by 2030. Goal 17 of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development formally recognizes that multi-stakeholder partnerships are needed at the global, regional, national, and local level, and urgent action is required to mobilize and unlock the transformative power of trillions of dollars of private resources to successfully deliver on our sustainable development objectives. But, like any other collaboration, the global partnerships for sustainable development isn't just, doesn't just happen because a collaborative task is assigned. Instead, it needs to be actively built upon principles and values, a shared vision and a common language that is simple to understand, relate to, and translate into collective action. And it is herein that we hope that the world's most popular sport, football, and a movement like Common Goal can make their biggest contribution. Thank you very much.